Casey and welcome back to my channel. If you are new here, hello, hi, I'm Casey and this is my channel. We do some awesomely fun things over here and if you are a subscriber, please thank you and welcome back. So today, since it is gross and ugly outside here, um, I decided to sit down and film just a fun, loungy video. I'm going to talk about some new music that I'm really digging and in particular an album that just came out while well, I wait for some food to get here because your girl wanted pizza. So there's that. Also trying out new lip and new eye stuff today because I've been having a horrible skin week and needed to do a lot to make myself okay today. So without further ado, let's go. So like I said, this video is going to be chatting about a new album that just came out. And yes, I am currently looking at my phone because I wanted to bring up the album and all the information on it. So if you guys follow YouTube people, um, I guess you will know the band Against the Current. They started doing cars on YouTube and have completely blasted off and are now signed by Fuel by Ramen, and have opened for Fall Out Boy, and have pretty much traveled all over. I'm super proud of them because I've been a fan of theirs since literally they were doing their covers, and if you haven't checked out their cover, check out their cover of Chocolate by 1975, because it is phenomenal. Christy Costanza is a legend. But they just released their sophomore record, and it is called Past Lives, and I have literally been living for it, and am absolutely obsessed with it. I currently have it uh, on my phone, and I've listened to it in full twice, and then have listened to the select favorite songs on repeat all day while I've cleaned my apartment and used my iPod and my wireless headphones. So, I thought I would talk you guys through the album and through some of my favorite songs. I guess the album in whole, but yeah. So, Past Lives was released Friday. I pre-ordered it, so at midnight, it's... I woke up Saturday and it had downloaded. Um, or I woke up Friday and it had downloaded, I guess. Yeah. And Saturday was the first day I had a chance to listen it through. And the first song on the album is Strangers Again, which if you are a fan of them, they released a long time ago um, when their album went on pre-sale and even before that. And they released it in conjunction with another song that I'll talk about. But Strangers Again, I think lyrically is a really good representation of where they've gone sound-wise. They are quite rock and pop, like punk rock. But they've gone more pop and synth, and I I don't hate it. I I love it. I'm not mad about it. I think it's awesome. They're pop with an edge, which, I mean, I like. I get. But Strangers Again is a really good indication of the album in the whole, and I think that it's, it's really good, and... I, I mean, lyrically, I love the song. I love what it says. I love the visual for it, the video they put out. So, yeah. The second song is The Fuss. And this is the song I was most excited about because the, the title of it got me. I was like, hmm, it's just called The Fuss. Like, what is fuss? What is the fuss? What is it? What does it mean? What does it stand for? And I gotta say, I loved it. It... It's lyrically really simplistic, I feel. There's not a whole lot of lyric. I mean, you'll get what I mean. But, I mean, it says, like, what's the fuss about? I've been trying to suss it out. Everyone's just floating by, like, and it says a lot of, like, empty words. And I, but it's also, it's a deep song, but it's really, really poppy and upbeat and summery and, like, Dancy, but yet if you listen, it's like, oh, it talks about, like, like, no one's really here anymore. Um, I keep having to, like, unlock. Next one is I Like The Way, and I like the song a lot. I think Chrissy did a really good job with the, her voice in the song and trying to sound more mature, 
And just in general, like, the song is about a relationship. Clearly, you could listen to it, and it's pretty much like... I feel like this song was taken out of her diary and put on the album, which I really love. Because it makes it very genuine. And I feel like that's the band, is a genuine band. So, song number four is personal. Now, this song has a bit of history. It was written about a friend of Chris Xtanza, who's the lead singer. It was about a friend of hers who passed away, and I instantly, when I heard the song, I instantly gravitated to it because it. I've lost friends, um, and I just instantly gravitated to it about missing someone and kind of like doing anything to get that person back. And I really loved it, and I gravitated to it, and I thought it was a really good song. It's very personal. Um, and it, it's sad, but very empowering at the same time. Number five voices is literally my journal. She wrote this song for me and she did share it for herself. But this is how honest the song is. It's about anxiety. It's about living in here. And if you're someone who does have voices, like, not even just voices, but like those little naggy feelings in the back of your mind, you'll get the song. I literally have listened to the song on repeat a lot, a lot, a lot, and I it gets me every time. Number six, Scream, is a fun song, and it's, it's like, it pounds, I guess, like it just pounds into your mind. And so the songs I have replayed, it's one of my favorites. So, I mean, it's just a good song. And I think it's an empowering, like, wanting to leave the relationship. And, and yeah, it's just a good song. Seven, Almost Forget, is about a relationship that went bad and wanting to forget. But, like, most people, like, we just can't and living with that. And that's basically the song. Song number eight, Pat, is one of my favorites, P-A-T-T. And it's a girl-empowering song, and it's about why do we have to look pretty? Why do we have to subscribe to the standards that have been set on us by society and Hollywood? And not everyone is pretty and blonde and perfect. And, yeah, so it's just a really good empowering song. And it's a, it's also like, uh, hey, guys, we don't have to look this way. We can be grungy and in our sweats and not makeup and still be beautiful. Song 9, Friendly Reminder, I feel like is a song to yourself, and it's a friendly reminder to just, you got this. I mean, the lyrics are quite dark, but it's a, you got this, you're good, smile, take care of yourself, and I really like that, so it's a good one too. Time Come Alive is that song where it, it literally almost made me cry. And I was listening to it at the park across from my house because um, I was able to go there and listen to the album a few times through and just chill out and fully listen to it. But it's a song that is basically like you're at the point in your life where you could continue to fight or give up. And everyone has worn, worn with those different parts of you because fighting is hard and it's easier to give up. And it's just, just you're tired. And I feel like that, that's what the song is, is it's that representation. It's that, you know, do I give up or do I fight? You know, and, and I really got that and I really like that. So this is one of my favorite songs. Sweet Surrender, I feel like, is the accompanying song to Come Alive because it's, it's this really sad song. But yet it is so happy and light at the same time because it's about like someone wanting you to stay, someone wanting you to be here and finding that reason to keep fighting and finding that reason to continue. And um, this song did make me cry. Um, I was a blubbering idiot. I sat on my floor in darkness and the candles and just listened to it. And sometimes you just need that, you know? And I feel like that song is such a good, song. Um, in whole, song by song. Now, my favorites are definitely The Fuss, Pat, Come Alive, Sweet Surrender, and I'm going to throw in Friendly Reminder there. Now, all the songs are pops. I love them all. 
for their respective rights. Those are just the songs that I really related to the most and that I really thought like, wow, these are amazing songs. This band is awesome. And they have totally changed... I feel like their writing and their sound, which I love. I love when bands can change with time and with audience and experiment because not like every band doesn't want to make the same album over and over again. And I feel like we see that a lot, like artists that just manufacture albums, like left and right. And I feel like like, One Direction was kind of like the sense that they signed an album. It was like every year there was an album. And they weren't given time to breathe between album cycles. And Against the Current has taken two years. I think two or three years in between albums, like full albums. And they have... Um, just matured and grown and I love that and I love them and I love where they started from and what they what they represent. So all in all I think the album's great. I think it's worth checking out. Um that's just my opinion. I wanted to do a review on this because I just felt like it was worth reviewing. So I hope you guys liked this video. If you give it a thumbs up, subscribe down below and don't forget to come back next week. And have a great and happy weekend. And if you guys want more videos like this, let me know in the comments. Because I like doing them. I like our chatty time. So see you guys next time. Bye.